All right, the Blair Witch Project. I'm happy about this. Most of you probably aren't. It is not one of the top 10 horror movies ever made in the history of cinema. Come on. This was my number one. So the fact that this movie even made the list, it makes me a happy boy. That is fucking weird. I think the Blair Witch Project is one of those moments in horror cinema that changed the course of history. Ushering in the revolution of found footage, of the shaky cam, of hey, we're making this movie and you're watching us make this movie. This movie is about three people making a documentary who go out into the woods and they realize that there are creepy stick figures everywhere and then something that's even scarier than that. <laughs> I didn't know whether it was real or not. Like, is this a documentary? Is this a, a feature film with actors? It was all kind of unclear, and that mystery propelled the film to become what it was. For an audience nationwide to have been convinced that this was real tapped into something really primal about the found footage format. A lot of people say it's slow, a lot of people are like, not a lot happens, but that's what's great about it. It spends its time getting under your skin. I think we've been so desensitized by having to show things all the time. That's what makes this movie so great is that horror isn't always about showing the monster or scaring you up front. It's about the unsettling nature of not knowing what's going on. And that's what this movie does perfectly. Oh my God, what the fuck is that? Dude, what the fuck is that? When I watch The Blair Witch Project in a dark room, I am completely sucked into that scenario from these characters' perspectives, and it really gets under my skin every single time I watch it. This movie caused a lot of bad found footage movies to come out, and a lot of good ones. It kind of brought legitimacy to the genre. That film revolutionized the way movies get made. The Blair Witch Project was made for like the cost of a camcorder, and look at how well it did. So if you have a cool idea, an original concept, genius execution, you too can scare the crap out of Mark Ellis. Come on, I hear him downstairs! I love that the Blair Witch made the top 10. I don't find this movie scary, so maybe if I did, I would understand why it ranks so high for some people. I don't know if it should have been on the top 10, but the fact that it's on it, like I think 10 is the right spot for it. I think it's a good 10 because it is the most recent movie that we've had on this list, and modern horror should be represented somehow, and I, and I would much rather have something like Blair Witch on the list than, say, The Conjury. Gosh, if we keep our heads together, we'll be just fine. Fucking bullshit! Night of the Living Dead, without a doubt, belongs on any top 10 horror movie list. You, you owe everything to Night of the Living Dead. This started it all. The drama is so strong, the characters are so gripping, that it's still a very easy film to watch. They're coming to get you, Barbara. A group of people get trapped in a house together in the middle of a zombie outbreak, and while zombies are scary, people are 10 times worse. One of my favorite things about revisiting Night of the Living Dead is seeing how how much the zombie genre has evolved over the years. This is, in my opinion, the most influential horror movie of all time, and it's probably the most important one ever made, because when this came out in the late 60s, not only was it a revolution with George A. Romero showing cool zombie effects, and you had that conceit, but you also had an African-American man, Dwayne Jones, playing the lead role of Ben, prominently featured in here in a role that is a hero. George Romero never intended it to be a commentary on race, which he has said many times in interviews throughout the years. He hired Dwayne Jones because he was the best guy for the job that he had available. It's not to say that you can't read things into a film that weren't intended, but I think the reason that the, the ending of Night of the Living Dead is so powerful is that it doesn't need the racial commentary to work. Well, you're her father. If you're stupid enough to go die in that trap, that's your business. However, I am not stupid enough to follow you. We wouldn't have Walking Dead. We wouldn't have Zombieland. We wouldn't have all these great movies that pop up and that keep reinventing the genre without Night of the Living Dead. Of course, Night of the Living Dead is gonna feel a little dated, especially when we have so much wild, crazy, gory zombie movies out there. And if you are a big fan of any kind of zombie movie, that makes this movie essential. And when you go back and revisit and compare, you can see how everything is connected, and it really just proves that this movie deserves a spot on the list. I don't think you can make a zombie movie without giving this movie a high five. Not like a metaphorical high five, like put the poster up before you start production, just like slap it. This movie deserves to be slapped, but in a good way.
Psycho is great. I like this movie. It's Hitchcock. Everyone likes Hitchcock. Psycho was one of those movies that I felt like I knew the, the mythology surrounding it before I had even seen it. It's iconic. It's influential. It's fantastic. It's a technical marvel. Jenna Lee steals some money. She does some bad things. She runs away. She doesn't really turn out well for her because she meets a creepy dude. She's got a creepy mother. Don't get in that shower, Janet. Don't do it. No, she got in the shower. She did. <laughs> Psycho started everything. Psycho was really the first horror movie, in my opinion, that really popped. It's the one that really got people talking. Just this creeping dread that, that someone who looks on the outside so nice and friendly and innocent like Norman Bates can be hiding this sinister persona. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? I love that they kill the, the lead character off halfway through the movie. I, I think the shower scene is brilliant. And a third into the movie, it, it completely shifts gears and turns into a, an entirely different story, and I respect the hell out of that. That's when you catch people off guard. You subvert their expectations in ways that you didn't even think were imaginable, and that's what this movie did. It definitely laid the groundwork for what would become the slasher genre. It's the one that really nailed the formula for horror, the music for horror, twists and turns. And the scary, without the gratuitous nature of Psycho is something that I really appreciate. Sometimes with horror movies today, you can do as much as you want with the blood and the violence and the gore, but go back and watch Psycho. It's violent for sure. It's Hershey's syrup, and it still scared a generation of people from using the shower. I don't think you can argue with having Psycho on your top 10. It's one of the most informative, iconic horror films ever made. Psycho absolutely deserves to be in the top 10, even if you don't think it's that scary, just the importance of it, I would say. We wouldn't have most of the horror movies that we had today without Psycho. Oh, Texas Chainsaw. I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I absolutely think it needs to be on this list. Like, there's something dirty and scuzzy about it. You know, I go to Texas for barbecue. Other people, it, it, there's chainsaws and there's a lot of killing and blood and violence and gore, and this movie just does nothing for me. Of all the OG slasher movies, I think this might be the only one that the first time I watched it, I had to cover my eyes, and I never cover my eyes in anything. What are you doing to yourself? This movie is about a group of kids who wind up being at a house with a lot of cannibals in it. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, when I hear that title, I just can't imagine what people were doing in 1974 when that movie came out because it fucked my shit up. It's not one of the films that had the most traceable impact on the future of the genre. There's just something so seedy and nasty and honest and real about it. Toby Hooper's direction, it's just chilling. Like Leatherface, as a, as a killer, he's just like this homicidal nut job, where, you know, and you, and you get to see his family and where he comes from and how that evil could have been created. Much like the Blair Witch Project, they kind of lied to you by saying this is based on true events. And that added to this kind of unsettling kind of feeling you get. Officers there discovered what appeared to be a grisly work of art remains of a badly decomposed body wired to a large monument. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the films that showed just how dark and grotesque you could go with the material and the audience would still follow you there. I'm a major horror fan, but more specifically, I am a slasher fan and Leatherface is part of the icons. I think Texas Chainsaw is one of those movies that deserves a place in the top 10. Yeah, I, th I think it genuinely holds up in terms of just scares and terror in a way that a lot of other maybe more classically revered or acclaimed movies don't. I don't find anything appealing about this film whatsoever and I think the crew just left. I think I'm now here, I've disgusted everybody else in this office because there's a reason why it's on the list and it ain't because of me. All right, Nightmare on Elm Street making the top 10, almost cracking the top five. Now there's a movie that belongs in the top 10. Nightmare on Elm Street made the list? Whatever. Nightmare on Elm Street absolutely had to make this list. It is one of the most inventive slashers out there. 
it is still super creepy. It still holds up. It kept me awake all the time as a kid. Did not want to fall asleep. I would never argue with this film being on the top 10. It is on my personal top 10, probably my top five. I love this movie so much. Maybe the greatest concept in the history of horror films, a man that comes to kill you in your dreams. <laughs> What's more scary than a slasher that makes you afraid to go to sleep? Wes Craven is able to expand that genre by adding a world that has real rules and real stakes and kids that fall asleep and never wake up again. Wes Craven just proved himself over and over again to be a filmmaker who was wildly creative with the sense of how to push people's buttons and just make them scared as hell. Safety from Freddy. <laughs> This movie came out at the right time, right in the peak of the slasher genre. It, it spawned a bunch of sequels, a bunch of inspiration came from Nightmare on Elm Street. So I think we have a lot of thanks due for Mr. Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger is one of the best slashers of all time. Freddy brought a new dynamic because Freddy was funny. I'm There's something really, really creepy about a crazy killer chasing you down, but also tormenting you. So much creativity, I think, with, with Robert Englund's Freddy Krueger, and I loved his, his backstory. Heather Langenkamp makes for such a spectacular final girl, so to speak. She's, she's intensely relatable, very driven. She's a little brassy and sassy in a way that's really fun, and not all final girls are like that. A lot of them are very well-behaved, more timid type characters, and she is, she's a sassy. Girl. You'll feel better when you sleep. It's just as simple as that. I am so glad Nightmare on Elm Street is in the top 10. I would have it a little bit higher on my list, but I'm glad that it's in there. It's in the conversation. I'm glad that people are talking about it. So at this point in our list, we've got Leatherface and now we've got Freddy. I think I'm good with this.